Hi everybody, how you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I'm Sean Butler. Bugsy Malone is down here on my right hand side. This is episode 115 of Tottenham Walks. To keep this one quick, if you don't mind guys, do me a favour. Smash a like button on your way in. Smash a subscribe button. Push if you haven't already and there's so many of you that watch regularly but don't subscribe. It's free guys, it's free. Just hit the button. And also hit the notification bell. It really helps the algorithm and also helps you guys be alerted to when we drop new content. And lastly, guys, join the conversation. Whatever I'm talking about today, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Guys, let's get going. Before I do, actually, let me say this. I really hope you're happy and healthy through the things that you love. Two things today, guys. One of them, transfer rumour for Tottenham Hotspur is... Have you heard of Juan Gonzalez from Lecce? <laughs> oh, I hadn't. <laughs> I hadn't. He's 20 years old. He's six foot three. Released from Barcelona in 2021. Playing for the Serie A. 15 games this season. One goal. Two assists. Four yellows. Uh, midfielder. Difficult to really kind of pigeonhole him into one or other positions. But what I would say I do when I don't know about these players and I haven't seen too much of them. I use my Y Scout tool and zone in on certain characteristics, certain specific skill sets and figure out where I think the guy is good or not. You'd think at six foot three he'd be great in the air. I'll be honest, I didn't see too much that gives me that much confidence, but maybe he can grow into that as his uh, age develops. Where he's brilliant though is dispossessing uh, opposition players in the middle of the park and on the transition, turning and driving and running with intent. And quite a, he's got quite a good gallop on him for a big man. And he can yet keep the ball under close control. So it's very difficult for players to, uh, to dispossess back. And then his timing of deliveries, timing of the release is actually very good. He usually then looks left or right. So in our case, it would be to Deki or to Sonny or Richie. Um, to then allow the move to be completed and then he kind of runs in late but you know hasn't scored too many goals yet but a, a good talent a good talent for me though you know I just always brings me back to this problem that Tottenham have of signing a lots of young players not really having too much success and under Conte you know is Conte the sort of manager that's gonna give developing players game time well whether you like him or not, Conte, as a manager, we all should recognise that it's just that's just not his priority, right? He's here today to win today and doesn't want to spend time wasting his opportunity to do that by experimenting with young talent. So it's immediately a kind of, I think, a no-no. I, I don't really see it happening. But look, for what it's worth, I still believe that Tottenham always have to have one eye on the future. You do need to always be looking at whether you can sign players that are relatively cheap, that have this massive runway of potential. And I think this Gonzalez kid, from what I've seen, could be that guy. Tottenham are not the only ones linked with him. West Ham, Fulham, Everton, Juventus, Roma and Liverpool are all looking at him. Lecce have said they want him until at least the end of the season. So if something was to happen, with any club, it would probably be a loan, a, a purchase to loan back in January or leave it until the summer. I'm not gonna to spend too much time on this one, guys, because I just don't really see the likelihood, the plausibility or the value of having a youngster like him come in yet. I think it's too early. He's only been playing top level football for a short period of time since he was released from Barcelona's youth uh, reserve system. So I think he needs a bit more, you know, prove it sort of uh, period. And we'll see where we go from there. What I did want to talk to you guys about today was, you know, just very briefly, because I'll keep this one as short as I can. Apparently it's looking good. Conte's talks apparently are progressing well. And it comes down to not so much money, but it comes down to the plan and whether or not Tottenham can, you know, offer him what he needs in the short term. And again, the reports out today, there's a guy called Tom McManus, I think it's an ex-Scottish footballer that was talking to the Football Insider. And he was saying, you know, you've got to really, if you're going to be realistic, look towards Inter to solve some of the problems. He thinks that Stefan de Vrij 
is an entirely viable solution. I 100% agree with him. Bastoni has come out and said he's not interested in leaving Inter. We know this story, so we should move on from him. He's also said that he really hopes that um, that uh, Skriniar will will hang around as well because he need because they need him, and we'll see what happens there. I'd love Skriniar; he'd be my first choice, but. In reality, I think PSG, if they come back to the table, Skriniar probably goes there. Stefan de Vrij, though, is going to be available for very small sums of money. But I don't want you guys to think of that as like some kind of defeatist approach. Because for me, and it's just my opinion, let me know yours. But I think de Vrij, I've said it a thousand times on this channel, I think he is such a quality and underrated, understated footballer. His Dutch playing partner, who went for big money to Juve from Ajax, and then ended up going to Bayern Munich recently in De Ligt, is the guy who kind of flies above the radar and gets most of the plaudits. But I think De Vrij is class, quality, brings leadership experience. He's only 30, he'll be 31 soon. And he immediately improves us in that position in the center of the center of the, of the back three. And you can do that, you can get that one done. The other name that's still obviously being rung around is Denzel Dumfries, right? Now, you know, if you've been watching my channel, that I'm not a big, the biggest fan of Denzel Dumfries. I'm not. I don't think he's... I think he's got everything in his locker. He can cross the ball. He can finish. He can run for days. He's big, he's strong, he's powerful, he's fast. He can defend. He just doesn't do any of those things consistently enough, well enough, for me. But that's not to say that maybe the Premier League wouldn't suit him. The pace of the game might be quicker. That might suit his natural tendencies and his physicality. You also know that Conte likes wing-backs that have a certain physical stature. And maybe Conte looks at him and thinks he could be moulded once again under his tutelage into being the player that, that, uh, that we need on the right-hand side. And I think that it's, that's also viable on a cost basis. Now, I know Inter Milan have come out and said that it's big money or no money at all. But I think they're just playing, you know, I think they're just playing games. I think they're trying to take advantage of the World Cup performances. They're trying to maximise the value, which is, of course, what they should be doing. But in reality, I think if you were to put 25, 27 million in front of the team at, uh, at Inter Milan, I'm pretty sure that they would bite. And maybe with their interest in, if their interest in Emerson Royale is legit and, and uh, sincere, then maybe you do a straight swap plus... 10 million or something right and then see if that can get the job done now for me as you as you know i've been saying this i don't i don't particularly rate him is he better than what we have 100 does he come in and immediately start 100 but i don't think you should be setting your benchmark or, set, or, or like using your desirable how desirable you find a player should not be based against the level of what we have when in the specific position of right wing back the baseline is so low the benchmark is so poor that basically anyone comes in and is an improvement so for me I've, I still I've said this a thousand times guys Pedro Porro for me would be my number one choice as an out and out right wing back I think he's the incredibly incredibly gifted as an all rounder he doesn't have the physical presence he's not big tall strapping and fast and stuff he's not slow but he's his all-round game is far, far more complete than Denzel Dumfries, and he's consistently very good. The other guy, I like I said it before, is Joaquin Mele from Atalanta and the Danish uh, team. He can play on the left wing back or the right wing back. I love him. I think he's exceptional. And the fact that he's versatile, that utility is very important because Conte does like to you know, invert the, the wing backs at times. And so having a, someone who can do that comfortably is... Uh, is extremely um, desirable, I think. So for me, like I'd go for if you could get Pedro Porro or Mele in, that would be my first choices. However, listen, I will lend my ear and lean into Conte's ex expertise in his job. He gets paid the big bucks, so if he thinks that Denzel Dumfries is the guy, it's okay with me. And how I'm going to round this off, guys, is I wanted to ask you the question really about our window. Like, it's not necessarily about how much money you spend; it's about whether the, the players come in that can do the job. How, how happy would you be on a scale of one to 10 if we signed De Vrij and Dumfries? Just those two. Those are the two main positions we need to improve in, right? 
it's not going to cost that much money. You could probably get that done for 35 million quid, maybe not even that much, 30 million quid. Or if you could send Emerson Royale the other way, because you've got too many players there in the same position if you do sign Dumfries. So being able to get rid of Emerson at the same time would be um, really, really helpful in trying to balance the books and on the numbers, on the homegrown versus foreign, etc. So would you be okay if those were the two signings? Just De Vry, just Dumfries. You know, not some superstar world-class signing like Scrini are, but knowing that they improve. And if, let me know your numbers on that. And then I'll also throw in a, a second option. If those two came in, plus also, you know, a, a creative player that was of the ilk, again, not a world-classer, not like a Madison, forget that one for a second. Let's just get back to kind of basics. What about those two plus Malinowski? Or those two plus Andreas Skov Olsen, who I've spoken about ad nauseum on this channel. I absolutely adore Skov Olsen. I, I know he had a bad World Cup, but so did that entire Danish team. I think Skov Olsen's going to be a £100 million player in five years. I think he's awesome, and I think he'd be a brilliant understudy for, for Decky on the right wing, who can also come back and play in other positions as well. Not necessarily him, though. Whoever you want, take your pick. But would you be okay with three smallish names or smallish valuations if it got the job done and improved us or would you consider that window a failure but i'm really interested mainly in those two dumfries and de Vry. would you be competent would you be capable would you be confident even wrong i used the wrong two adjectives then would you be confident going into the second half of the season if those were our january business let me know your thoughts guys like share and subscribe and as always as always i'll see you next time bye bye